What are the intercepts of the function f of x is equal to x times x squared minus 2x minus 8? All right, so first thing is you have to understand what it means by intercepts. We have two types of intercepts. We have x-intercepts, and then we have y-intercepts. Now, when we look at a graph, all right, pretend I'm going to draw a function. Let me make that a little neater. Pretend I'm going to draw a function in uh, blue here, right? And let's just say this is the function. It doesn't really matter what it is. This doesn't necessarily represent what this will look like. It's just something I totally made up, all right? And actually, let me let me make it a little curvier, something like that. Curvier? That's definitely a word. Um, so the x-intercepts, okay, is going to be the location of the function where it crosses the x-axis. Remember, the x-axis is always the horizontal. The y-axis is the vertical, all right? That's the convention. Now, when you give the x-intercept, they sometimes just want the value of the x-coordinate. But I think it's very useful to think about the y-coordinates of the x-intercepts. And the reason is, is because there's something consistent about those y-coordinate values. If you notice, this, x, this coordinate right here would have some negative x-value. But I don't know what it is. But what I do know is I do know the y-value, right? It's zero. It's zero because it has no y. It's not up on the y-axis. It's not down. It's just literally at the zero mark, right? Also, this same thing, right? This is some negative x value, but I also know the y value there. It's zero. I know the same thing about here. There's some positive x value this time. I don't know what it is, but I do know that the y value is zero. So it is in the nature of the x-intercepts that the y value will equal zero, okay? You have to keep that in mind. Now, if we move on to then the y-intercept, things just get flipped on their head. It's the same logic, but it's just opposite now, right? Um, so what do we know about all of the y-intercepts? We don't know the y-value. In this case, it's some negative number, right? I, because it's below the x-axis. But I don't know what it is. But what I do know is I do know the x-coordinate now, all right? I do know that x-coordinate. So when we're dealing with now our y-intercepts, you will always know the x-value, okay? The x-value will always equal zero, all right? And this was for the y-intercept, and this one was then for the x-intercept. All right, so <clears throat> armed with this knowledge, we can now begin to solve this algebraically. So let's rewrite the function, and remember that instead of writing f of x, you can simply write y. They basically mean the same thing. You can leave it f of x if you like. On this graph, you would just change this to be the f of x, you know, f of x. It's still the, it's still the y-intercept. You'd still call it like y, uh, it would still be the y-axis, basically. You could still call it the y-intercept. I'm just going to change that to make it a little easier, okay? So let's rewrite it. So we got y is equal to x times now x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, and first thing I want to do now is let's do the, uh, it doesn't really make a difference, but why don't we uh, solve for the uh, y-intercept first, okay? So let's do the y-intercept. All right, now what do you know about y-intercepts? And by the way, sh there should only be one y-intercept, uh, because if there isn't, uh, it's not a function, okay? Uh, so if, if they're telling you it's a function, you should only have one y-intercept. Uh, if you're not sure of why that is and, you know, vertical line tests and all this stuff, check out our functions playlist. Um, so what we know about the y-intercept, remember, is that x will always equal zero. So what that means is just plug in zero everywhere you see your x value. Okay, minus two times zero, minus eight. Because remember, anytime you know the value of one of the coordinates, Okay, you can always find that, if you know the function, you can always find that missing coordinate by plugging it in. When you plug in zero into this function, you're basically asking yourself, hey, if x is zero, what in the world is y? Okay, that's what you're basically doing. So when we do this math, this is zero, right? That's zero, zero, negative eight. Why did I write a two? Because I said zero, right? Minus zero, minus eight. I know that doesn't make sense, minus zero, but... This is going to be 0 times then like a negative 8, right? And 0 times negative 8 is just 0. You might have already seen that from the beginning, but I'm just going through all the math. So we now realize for our y-intercept then, we just found the y value. And remember, we said that's the one that we're not sure of. We're sure that it's x is going to be 0 because that's just in the nature of the y-intercept. But now we know the y value. So the 
y-intercept here should have a coordinate 0, 0. In other words, it should pass through the what? Origin, right? Or a gym. It looks like or a gym. Origin. Okay. I sometimes write in hieroglyphics, so don't mind me. This is going to be now the x-intercept. All right. Now remember, we're going to calculate for the x-intercept. Now the x-intercept, you will know that y will equal zero. Okay. Now, rewrite your function. Y is equal to x times x squared minus 2x minus 8. And what we're going to do is everywhere we see a y, we're going to plug in our zero. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this and you're like, oh my God, how the heck do I solve this, right? Just take a step back. Sometimes we usually think too like algebraically, like what, what step do I need to do? Instead of just looking at this and doing a little thinking, it's saying that somehow this right side of the equation has to equal zero. Well, how does that happen? How will that happen? Think about just this term for a minute. You have a term out here and it's multiplied by this whole thing inside that parenthesis. What value does this have to be in order to make this whole right side become zero? We actually just saw it over here, right? We literally just saw that exact example, okay? So you actually already know that x can equal zero. If x equals zero, you know if x is zero everywhere here, you know that this whole thing is gonna go to zero. And does zero then equal zero? Of course it does. We actually already found it basically, okay? If, so this is kind of a, it's a little strange, right? If you know that your y-intercept intersects the origin, well then that's also an x-intercept, right? It's also where it's intersecting the x-axis because the origin here has both, right? X and, right? It, it, it's the Crossing the, if something crosses that origin, it crosses both the x and the y. So that's what we already found out, okay? So I can write down now, I'll write it on this side. Our x-intercept can be, one of them will be 0, 0. That's fine, okay? And now we have to think about, well, how else? So let me just erase this. Now we have to think about, well, how else can this thing become 0? Well, this thing could also become 0, and this is kind of where it becomes a little tricky to look at it. But that can also become zero if whatever is inside of this now parenthesis is zero, right? Pretend, pretend your x, I mean, that's going to be the whole point of doing this, uh, the algebra now, because it might be a little tough. I, I, I'll ask you, what do you need to plug in here for x to make this inside the parenthesis go to zero? You don't see that immediately, I bet. Most people don't, right? I don't. So that's where our algebra comes in, okay? We have a series of steps we can follow to answer that question. But to know what we need to do is not algebra based. That's logic based, right? To know that in order for this right side to equal zero, either this thing outside of the parenthesis must be zero, or what's ever inside this parenthesis must be zero. Because basically what I have here is, uh, is I have a condition where it says like x times z, let's call it, right? This whole thing is z. I know if x will be zero, then this whole thing is zero. I don't care what z is, right? I also know conversely that if z is zero, this whole thing's gonna go to zero, and I don't care what x is. So I'm almost looking at this as like two different parts, right? You can now think about this, and this is where you might be thinking about, oh, this looks familiar. You can basically break this thing up into two pieces. You're thinking about this now, you're thinking about, hey, x equals zero, right? You're doing that to the left, to this side. And then you're going to also break this up. And let me just extend this down. Okay, you're also going to break this up. And then you're going to say that x squared minus 2x minus 8 should equal 0. That's the two questions you're asking yourself, right? You already figured this side out. Now, how do we do this? So this turns out, right, this looks like a quadratic. So you have to, you have to get the, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying. I got a little distracted, sorry. That's the problem sometimes when you have a window where you work and you wind up gazing outside. Um, anyway, uh, you, you, have to, you have to find the binomial, right? You have to basically factor this, okay? So we have to factor this. We know how to do that in terms of our quadratics. There's gonna be some x over here. We have to think of now two numbers that multiply to negative eight, but that will add to now negative two, all right? And I think you might have an idea, maybe a negative four and a positive two, Right, negative four and positive two multiply to negative eight. Negative four times two will equal that, uh, excuse me, negative four plus two 
will equal a negative 2. So we have our factors, right? Now again, we actually do the same analysis. Now you might say, oh, this is the part I know. I break this down. I, I go x minus 4 is equal to 0, and then I do x plus 2 is equal to 0, right? Why do you do that? You do that because you're asking yourself, this whole term will go to 0 if either this thing is 0 or this thing is 0, right? So you're basically asking yourself those two questions, right? And when we ask ourselves those two questions, we can set them up as two math equations. We can say x minus 4, what does x have to be to equal 0? And then x plus 2, what does x have to be to equal 0? Right, you add the 4 on over to the right-hand side, I'm running out of space, but x should be equal to 4, x should be equal to negative 2. And now these are the x-coordinates of our, and this one too, these are the coordinates of all of our x-intercepts, okay? The x, the x coordinate. So I already have 0, 0. The next one I can write now, actually I'll write the negative 2, so maybe what I'll do is I'll move this down because I'll write it kind of in order. So it's going to be negative 2. Remember, you know the y, and the y value will always be 0 here for the x-intercepts. And then the x value should be 4, okay, and 0. So you have three x-intercepts, and then you have one y-intercept. You can now begin to think about what the function should look like, right? What I have over here closely approximates it, but the only difference is that this value here should have been at the origin. I did not think about that ahead of time. Like I said, this did not exactly match. Uh, but the point is now, we know what it actually should be. You can also look at this in the calculator now, watch. You can just type in y equals, plug in your function, okay? x parenthesis then, x squared, all right, then we got minus 2x, minus 2x, minus 8. All right, close those parentheses. Now hit your graph, okay? Now I messed with the window before, so let me just try to zoom standard for a second. Let me just do zoom 6. All right, cool. Now this should hopefully be uh, large enough. Do you see now where this graph is intersecting the x-axis? Look, each of these tick marks, one, two, three, four, those are all negative, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. If you notice, it is intersecting the x-axis right at negative two. That's what we said it should do. And it's also intersecting the x-axis at zero. That's what we said it should do. And it's intersecting the x-axis at positive four. That's what we said it should do. It's also intersecting the y-axis at zero. That's what we said it should do, right? This is now a better picture of what the graph actually looks like. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Let me see if this will work to give you a better picture. Yeah, that's a little too small now, but hopefully you kind of get the, get the idea. What you can now do is hit second table, if you like, or second graph to get the table, and just you'll be able to find these values. Watch, when x is negative 2, what's the y value? Zero, right? When x is 0, what's the y value? 0. When x is 4, what's the y value? 0, right? We didn't even need the calculator. You can do this by all logic and algebra, okay? But that's how you would approach it. You can use your calculator to help you if you're allowed. It's much faster, obviously, but some, you can't do it. So how would you do it? Exactly how I described in the video. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I really hope this helps. All right, I try, I try my absolute best right, to teach you about why it's happening, what are we doing, not just memorizing a series of steps. Because um, I think ultimately in the end that will provide the most value to you if you really want to learn. If you just want to know how to do it, then this probably isn't the best channel for you. But if you really want to learn, stick with us. I promise I'll get you there, all right? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you can like and subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates, that'd be awesome. Look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.